What's up, Reject Nation? Moving on to Loki. Changed up my beanie just to mix it up a tad bit. Let's watch this already, damn it. Woo. Exclusive clip, they said. End game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I hope that's the opening of the show. <laughs> you just start there. Cool. <laughs> Where did you travel to? <laughs> Reminds me of like when Iron Man was in the sand. Wow. You're taking me somewhere to kill me. No, I'm taking you someplace to talk. Oh! <laughs> I forgot he was in this! You like to lie, which you just did. Because we both know you love to talk. How long have you been here? I don't know, it's hard to say. You know, time is differently here at the TBA. Nice. You'll catch up. <laughs> Love the imagery. That lady Loki? I heard she was a wrist. Oh. Dude, I love this music. <laughs> this looks Awesome. Damn. Oh, he's definitely becoming like a time agent for them. It's gonna be the Doctor Who or the MCU. <laughs> wow, short hair Loki. <laughs> I'm down. Said I'm down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said I'm down. <laughs> Coolest way to hop into the Bifrost. <laughs> Dude! Come on. What did you expect? <laughs> okay, so far that takes the cake for me. That was I, the most be, effortlessly enjoyable. I'm not gonna lie, that definitely took the cake for me. Uh, between, like, Falcon Winter Soldier, WandaVision trailer, don't get me wrong, those were amazing, and they really are. This just slightly edges it out. I love the, like, sci-fi fantasy mystery tone. I hear one of the people involved with Rick and Morty is behind this as well, and you do get that vibe. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's it's not as, like, <laughs> wacky out there, but especially with, like, that Owen Wilson scene. You know how Rick and Morty has, like, the Citadel and all that, and people... And the TVA, like, the Time Variance Authority, they are kind of like that group, which I'm forgetting the name They're of the Rick the and Morty. Citadel of Rick. <laughs> but you know what I mean? And like, Loki is just the Rickest Rick. But you know how in uh, Rick and Morty, there is that, that one group that deals... that enforces the law when it comes to time meddling, and that's kind of what the TVA is here, and it looks like they're recruiting Loki to be a part of the TVA or like, okay, you know what? You're an outlaw. And maybe they're blaming him for like the events that happened yeah. in Endgame and how the timeline got all messed up there. Exactly, That's yeah. kind of the impression I'm getting. So if you want to get out of our debts, if you want to, you know, have this strip from your record, you got to become a time agent for us. And that's sort of yeah. the impression I'm getting here, but it looks like along the way, he like, okay, fine. I'll agree to it. But then he starts having his own fun. And then he starts... Yeah doing his own thing. I do get kind of a weird Rick vibe from him. No, and it's, yeah, because yeah. he's always in control and he's irreverent and yeah, like his plans probably won't go 100% right. according to plan, but part of his charm is watching him improvise in the moment and rise to whatever stakes are thrown his way. It doesn't necessarily seem like a specifically anthology show, but again, with the shifting tone of all sure. the letters and stuff, it looks like we have a such a broad spectrum of things we can possibly do with the show. So just, yeah, like as a viewer, this 
just got me giddy for possibility, and I absolutely adored that payoff to the scene from Endgame. Mm, you yeah. know, like using that as the introduction here. And I do, yeah, like if they use that as the intro to the show, I would be very excited just the same. I mean, we've known, if you're people who've been following the news, we've known that this series will focus on that version of Loki, but especially for newer audiences to not be confused, like, what, I thought Loki died at the beginning of Infinity War. But if they watch this yeah. show, it goes, Oh, oh, that makes a lot more sense now, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, that closing shot sequence was so cool. We've seen that go with Bifrost hopping before, but that's easily the coolest way to do it. That's Tom Cruise style. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they said Heimdall, and I, but this is the Loki from his timeline. Because I was like, what? Heimdall's still alive? Yeah. yeah. Thought he died. <laughs> but this is the Loki from his, uh, that's what got me uh, confused. But is Idris Elba going to show up in this series as well? I mean, I'm loving the trajectory of what we're seeing here because... Not only does it look fun, but there's there's also this real dark undertone throughout. Oh, yeah. And I love that we've gotten three trailers for, the, I mean, there's more trailers out, <laughs> mm -hmm. but we've gotten the three big main most advertised ones, and yet they all feel so different, different. from yeah, one another. Yeah. And this is just another addition to that. There's something that feels more mysterious in a different way than what WandaVision is, you know? It's yeah. more like, what the hell's Loki gonna get up to? And how is he gonna take advantage of this? He's a prisoner at first. But then he, you know he's going to find ways to, to use this to his advantage. Yeah, exactly. yeah. He's going to find ways to bend the rules to, yeah, to exactly to his advantage. This really does strike me as a potential for a Doctor Who-esque show within this universe. Yes. Because Loki, with the power that he already has now being sort of co-opted, it almost reminded me of like a Suicide Squad scenario True. in that way where it's like, well, you're too formidable you're to right, have right. running around. We're going to need to use your right, services right. and gain some leverage. So like, I love bringing that flavor in and as an excuse to keep this character alive who has died in iterations of the timeline. Sure, like, sure. This seems like the most fun way to do that. And yeah, like I love some of the shots, especially in the middle where you get these ominous looking like shots mm -hmm. of silhouettes and people with lanterns. Like it looks like maybe some of the secret edge too will be some really cool atmospheres, mm -hmm. really amazing design work. Cause I loved all the, the just production values from this, you know? Koof, this Hell is yeah. uh, this is awesome. Guys, what'd you think of this Loki trailer between the three, which is the one that takes the cake for you the most? Subscribe to The Real Rejects, click that notification bell. Are you excited for Owen Wilson to be in this last but not least Andrew Hayes I'm excited to be shouting out our long time not only patron Jack but friend Andrew Hayes because I found out recently he's actually part of a band and he he slaps at the bass. Slap at the bass. He slaps at the bass. Slap at the bass. It's called Pandas and the Needlefish. Ooh, that's a great name. It's a great name. I suggested it. Give me credit. Yeah, and and royalties and residuals for when you hit it big. And then let us open for you as like stand-up comedy. Nah, I can't yes stand that. But also he's going to film school. Hey, <laughs> you're just living every creative dream, man. You're doing it all. You're taking advantage of, now that you're 45 years old, you're finally pursuing your dreams. I'm so happy for you, dude. I hope that when you're in film school, you get to be an awesome director, cast some actresses, mm -hmm. get canceled, blacklisted in Hollywood, never able to work again because Hollywood. you wanted them to be in your music videos for Panda and the Needlefish. I mean, you know, it's a pretty big opportunity. Especially because you get to meet the guys in the band. It'll work on me, alright? Send me that casting call. I'll be there. I'll be there to hang off your leg. In adoration. I'm just gonna stare at you for the rest of this. Alright, you can.